So before even starting, I would like to you know kind of introduce both of us. My name is Akash Singh. I'm CEO co-founder of Saro Saro Academy. Uh, I am a fellow in information privacy, a CIPP, E, a CIPM, a CIPD, and also a IABP advisory board member. Right. So I have some certifications, but definitely what I work around is one trust implementations, big ID implementations. Think how we talk about data discovery. <clears throat> we do privacy program management in companies, and you take a name of a brand and they're already associated with us right through our academy or through saro right that is uh, we, it's just the one we just have been working for one and a half years uh, but here we are right trying to spread awareness trying to do the right thing in the market uh, so karthik so karthik is part of my team uh, i think since we kind of started saro he has been there so he has been working with me in all the engagements of privacy that i do and he's an expert in pia right and together we're going to take the session we want to get ahead and try to impart some knowledge and clarify your questions whatever questions you have on top of your mind or you want to chat type in the chat so karthik thank you for the humble introduction akash so like as i was just saying the definition so let me just repeat it again pia is a process which assists organization in identifying and managing privacy related risks which are bound to arise if that activity is carried out so this uh, this is usually done before new projects initiatives or whenever there is a change in system policies or uh, you know uh, business relationships so let me just introduce you to the concept pia was was conceived when gdpr came out article 35 of the eu gdpr uh, so basically it states that a data protection impact assessment needs to be conducted so the idea was that whenever there is a there was a change or something new was introduced in business and as a result of that it might pose a new high risk to the rights and freedom of the natural person now this obligation was put that a privacy risk assessment should be carried out to basically safeguard the rights and freedom of natural person so this obligation was put forward on every data controller so now every data controller prior to processing activity is carried out he must address those risks associated with such processing activity so just to summarize everything pia is a tool to assess the privacy impact and the risks of uh, uh, risk of the processing activity uh, in relation to the pia that is collected that's what my understanding is when it comes to pia what types of organization might consider to have a pia all organization sensitive pia processing companies okay companies which have sensitive data companies which process customer data every organization having pia any organization who is storing or transferring data they need high risk processing activities okay all organizations who process high risk data okay cross border data transfer so guys you have to answer through menti by the way so menti link is there just have to click on the link and you will see you can answer right so the, so what is the answer of the question karthik so all in all i think uh, the answer that we are getting is uh, somewhere near uh, what uh, the actual requirement is so per se uh, what type of organizations might consider having a uh, privacy impact assessment so if you are going by the ideal practices i would suggest every organization that is collecting pii or is having data is storing the data and using that for some some or the other processing activity should in turn conduct a pii uh, PA, uh, pia but uh, as stated by the gdpr there's a certain requirement let's say if an organization is carrying out automated processing then it has to conduct a pia if uh, an organization is collecting data of a large number of people is uh, regularly monitoring a large area of people then it should conduct a pia and uh, if uh, the organization is collecting data or is dealing with data that uh, talks about uh, that is sensitive in nature and talks about let's say a criminal uh, record of a person then that organization needs to carry out a dpia but uh, like i just mentioned as an idle practice because pia is something that safeguards your organization as well this is something that needs to be carried out as soon as you are collecting a pia you know just to get yourself in line with the compliance as an idle practice i personally feel that any organization uh, that is just you know looking uh, to uh, perform well in the business um uh, have basically building good relationships with the uh, customers it should conduct a pia because that shows uh, the customers understand that uh, the company is putting in certain efforts so they would understand that uh, the company is putting some forth efforts so uh, 
basically a PIA would be helping your organization as well as the data supports. Yeah. So any organization so, that processes PIA, right, directly, indirectly have to do a PIA. And now the question is, is this a compliance requirement? Yes, if you process things like uh, EU data or maybe the upcoming data operation laws in UAE, or there are or there is some data around Singapore, right? Or maybe an RBI guideline applies to you. So it depends, right? It depends whether you need a PIA or not, or do you want to generate trust in your business, right? When you want to generate trust for your business, your customer, because Apple sells on privacy, right? And you buy an iPhone just for privacy. So if you already are buying an iPhone for privacy, then the era has already started of privacy where every company needs to come up and say, hey, our privacy practices are this good. Because now what is happening is the work that we are also doing around industry is companies are coming to us saying the requirement of my product to be sold to a corporate is that a PIA needs to be submitted of that product. Right. And we are the people who are doing that product PIAs so that it can be submitted to the companies. Right. Especially if you look at medical insurance companies or companies which have customer data, right? Sensitive data, right? All of them are with us. We're doing something for them, right? Just to make sure. At what frequency do you need to perform? PI should be done as part of best practice. Definitely should be done as best practice. But <clears throat> this is a very good question. So basically, Rohan, I'll tell you. The answer is it depends. Because the moment, <clears throat> if you look at a change management process, the moment there's a change that has to happen, you need to do a PIA. Right, because the processing changed. So whenever the processing changes, a PIA is needed. If the processing doesn't change, you can stay there for one and a half years, 18 months around that time. But usually processing changes because everything changes. Right, Some new product comes in the team, some new processing starts, or we have product enhancement, something else is there. right? So if something is always there, and see, we are doing PIAs only for sensitive data also. right? It's not like we'll go to the organization and tell them, hey, you know what, we should do PIA for 1000 applications, right? That is not possible, right? It's not even possible for anybody in Europe to do this. So what happens is we identify those key applications and get things done, right? So it's about the key applications that we do PIA off. So you have to figure that out, right? What is important for your business? Where customer data is being stored? Where employee data is being stored, right? What do we look for? Where, which is more vulnerable data that we have, right? Okay, so what is a PIA? So PIA has three parts. If you look at it, identification, maintenance, and compliance, right? So if you look at any compliance law in the world, right, compliance is the key, right? For PIA, it becomes mandatory for the business. But if it's not, we have to identify and we have to maintain our documentation so that we can demonstrate compliance or we can submit our reports to our senior management or to our customers telling them, hey, this is, this is the customer uh, report, right? This is the report that you have. Okay, so which article talks about PIA, guys? We're talking about GDPR, I'm sorry. 35. This is cheating, by the way, but it's still fine because easy question. Somebody knows, then everybody knows. Okay, so Karthik, what do you? So basically, uh, yeah, article 35 states that uh, basically what we were just talking about. As soon as a processing activity is being taken up, or let's say if there's a new technology that is uh, taking, that is uh, being introduced into an organization, or if the nature scope or let's say the context of the processing activity changes and this is somehow uh, likely to result in high risk basically the data subject now is at a more high risk uh, than it was earlier then a dpi needs to be performed and this is what uh, article 35 of the gdpr says just uh, to basically to safeguard the data subjects their rights and the freedoms as well as to safeguard your organization a controller has to uh, basically prior to the processing has to take out an assessment and that is the PIA. So basically in that, he has to assess what all impact uh, could be the resultant factor of uh, the processing activity and how uh, those risks that we have identified needs to be mitigated. And uh, basically that is it. Article 35 talks, uh, and this is a mandatory requirement as per the GDPR. So every organization that is falling within the ambit of GDPR needs to do a PIA. So Karthik, what should a PIA identify? Right. What are these things that we are looking for? So now my question to everyone this I think this I'm asking from every from everyone's side now. Right. That the question is, what are we looking for when we are doing a PIA? Right. You are an expert, you have done 100 PIAs till now. Right? So, uh, so let's what start. is it that you look for? Like what is okay. that process? If let's say if you take an example of an HR talent acquisition process, right? So what is it that comes to your mind that you'll think about while taking out as a risk of concurrency from a GDPR angle? 
Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, if I start off with how should uh, basically what a PIA should identify? Uh, let's start off at the very beginning. Uh, the first thing that you need to do as part of a PIA is assessment. So PIA, according to me, should identify each and every associated problem with the processing activity. Now, what a PIA does is it assesses what type of information you are collecting or uh, whether it is really necessary for the task that you are taking up. So let, let's just take an example here. Let's say you are uh, uh, conducting a processing activity and you're collecting information that is not at all needed for that set, set activity. Then as part of the assessment, you're collecting more information that is required. So that's why uh, PI is also taken up. You basically assess what all data are you collecting for what activity is it required? Is it really required? And uh, what is the use of it? Then you move on to the safeguard part. So uh, understand uh, that collecting data is like fuel for uh, any business and it is something which has to be done. So businesses cannot opt out of, you know, uh, collecting data. So naturally, how do we uh, stop the data collection? What we can do is we can put safeguards around the infrastructure of the organization and draw a conclusion regarding what safeguards are being put up by the organization. Are they adequate or not? Let's say if an organization is using encryption as a process, encryption as an organizational measure to uh, safeguard the data. So we, uh, as a consultant, we come in and we assess whether those encrypted, uh, uh, so whether the encryption that is being put up on the uh, files, are they adequate to you know, safeguard the data or not? Then the, as part of the, uh, so when we move on with the uh, safeguard part, then we associate risks. So once we know that data flow, uh, so once we know the whole data flow along with the safeguards that are implemented in an organization, and uh, when we are done with the assessment part, we associate what all risks could in turn arise from the whole uh, processing activity. Then basically, once we have identified all the risks that are associated, we move on to the recommendations part. Then uh, again, like uh, just something to mention as part of uh, uh, somebody who's approaching a PIA, DSR, let's say uh, data subject, this is something that uh, is something you need to think of. So as a consultant, it's my job to identify the practices within an organization and put it up with the uh, regulatory requirements. So uh, when you're attempting a PIA, it's your job to assess how a data subject, so it's your job basically to assess the uh, practices within an organization and assess how a data subject can exercise its rights here. Uh, for any processing activity for that matter. So DSR are a mandate and a requirement as laid down by the GDPR. So you understand how that are being implemented within an organization. If there are capabilities within the organization to carry out DSRs, if not, that is a risk in turn. So uh, the risks are not only associated with the data that you're collecting, it's also uh, on the organizational measures within the organization. So if an organizational practice is not up to the compliance limit or the standard, then that also in turn could be a risk. And uh, moving on, aside from that, uh, aside from DSRs, like other things that you need to assess as part of a PIA is something like, uh, let's say, legal basis for a processing. So aside from the rights of individual, PIA also puts a check on the source of your data collection, whether it is well-founded or not. Uh, meaning a PIA also makes the assessment regarding the legal basis of, uh, uh, of the data that you're collecting, whether you're collecting uh, so if you're using consent as a legal basis, so we assess as a consultant whether that consent was uh, freely obtained or not. So all in all, these are some of the few things that PIA needs to identify. So to assess basically whether, uh, so all in all, again, let like, just me uh, put it clear that it's not our job to document and rec uh, recommend based on the activities. It's our job to make the client's uh, processing activity a bit more efficient. So that's where we come in. Rather than just documenting it, uh, we need to uh, think outside of the box and help mitigate risks uh, that uh, in turn could arise from either organizational practices or yeah. measures or from the yeah. data. I would also like to, you know, again, go back to my basic chart, right? So basically, when I am thinking about a PIA, right, I am thinking about a PIA, as he has said, and I'm just going to add on to things. So basically, what am I testing? I'm testing whether the process or the product is giving data subject rights. Right. That is something that I'm checking, like all the rights, depending on. So as the, as the country changes, the rights change and just the PIA checks the different things, right? This is a risk. If you do not have a data deletion process in the company, if you don't have a data retention, retention schedule in the company, these are risk, right? And these are all data subject rights because it comes tomorrow. If you cannot change this data, update this data, these are all risks, right? From the product angle or a process angle. So if you cannot do that, it's a risk, right? That is a risk you identify. So there's one risk is data subject request. Okay. What is the next risk? The next is principles, right? Now GDPR principles, right? Now let's say there are GDPR principles. 
So now GDPR principles cannot be taken up because, and this is something that we teach in our CDDPO modules, right? Because if you look at a certified CDDPO, what happens is we get into ROPAs, PIAs, processes, privacy notice, right? You, you name a privacy implementation thing and we kind of you know, do it practically, do it with you, give you feedback. So, so that is what we look for, right? We always look for data subject rights and we always look for GDPR principles, right? In detail, we'll do PIA, find out all the risks, document it in our risk and control matrix, and then look for recommendations, discuss with the team and look for recommendation and give the recommendation ahead, right? So yeah, so will an automated processing of data require PIA? Okay, guys, quickly, come on. Let's not waste time here. Yes or no? Is data rectification process necessary apart from data? Yes, it is necessary. Rectification, if you look at Facebook, they give you all the data, right? You can even download the data. So yes, data rectification process is necessary. You have to, if GDPR applies, the, even the employee comes tomorrow and comes back and says, hey, I need to change my data. Then you need to give that access to him. How to identify where legal basis says, guys, I'm reading this question out for you, by the way. Why don't you just answer till then? So how to identify instances where legal basis would be legitimate interest? Okay. Yeah, I'll answer this. I'll answer this. This is a good question. So legal basis is legitimate interest when you are doing things that override data subject rights, you know, a right of a data subject. The moment it overrides. Now let's say an example, right? What is the first example that comes to mind? Company-wide surveillance, cyber security applications. You cannot take consent for reporting an antivirus. Yes, please tell me if I'll put anti-malware in a system. No, the, the business interest already overpowers the interest of a data subject. If you are putting CCTV in the company, you're not going to ask whether you're going to put CCTV or not. If you are building an application, let's say, let's say any big application, Flipkart, Mintra, any, any biggest or Amazon, right? And they are taking your data. They are going to improve you, their applications. They are going to use your data for LND. That is legitimate interest. You can't say no to that. Otherwise, how will the application grow? They have legitimate interest, right? To make sure that they can do that. So I hope I gave you three good examples. Uh, sensitive criminal records are not consist, cons uh, not called sensitive PII, but they have different issues. You cannot process criminal data directly. If you look at Europe, you need different permissions for that. Doesn't count under uh, sensitive PI, but obviously it's sensitive PI. It has more issues. You can't even process it. So when is a PIA required? So there are three options, right? We, obviously automated processing is yes, right? Everybody knows the right answer. But the requirements are that we do automated. If you're doing automated processing, if you're doing large scale processing, if you are doing criminal offense data, and right? if you're doing any of them, mandatory to do a PIA, right? We have to do a PIA. I'll just tell you an interesting fact, right? Uh, anything that you do using an application comes in automated process. It is just, you know, the, the definition is so weak, right? That it will come in automated processing, right? If you use an application, it just comes in automated processing. And then people ask me, Akash, what is large scale? Since I am born in this industry, 2017, people are asking me, what is large scale? It depends. Right? It depends on what is large scale for you. Right. Usually thousand record processing, not thousand people, not thousand people. You may have a bank account and you have may you have five transactions. So five transactions will count. Number of transactions will count with PII. So thousand to fifteen hundred, if it's more than that per month, it's usually treated as large scale processing. Purpose of a data protection impact assessment. Uh, so, uh, purpose of a data friction impact assessment is first to calculate. Uh, so, basically, like I just said, in that calculate method to decrease is because we identify. So, basically, uh, let me give you a background to it. Uh, whenever we do a PIA, we find out the risks that could arise in turn with the processing activity. And since this is something that is done prior to that activity is actually taking place, you have a good idea of what risks you are facing eventually, and you have a chance to mitigate those risks. So in turn, you're uh, also decreasing the risks that are associated with the activity. You are protecting, safeguarding your organization against uh, financial reputational loss. Uh, you are, uh, again, in, basically, since you are complying to the GDPR uh, principles and uh, provisions, you are, uh, uh, you are basically facing the, uh, you are uh, face, you are basically complying to the GDPR part and uh, not adhering to the penalty. Uh, you are not, uh, not facing that. And uh, since uh, 
uh, you are uh, carrying out a DPIA or a PIA, you have a better understanding of the risk uh, that are associated with you. So you in turn have a better efficient model now to process your activity. So uh, when a PIA is done and the recommendations are carried out, so the risks are mitigated. Privacy is something that will be embedded in its uh, embedded in the processing activity itself. So basically, the purpose of doing a PIA is first to decrease risks, uh, decrease penalty and fines, uh, safeguarding your organization to better understand and make your organization efficient and to incorporate privacy by design also. So all in all, conducting a PIA rather than mandate, it should be an ideal practice, like I just said. Every organization to, should go for a PIA just to make themselves better at, at uh, function. So are risk mitigation strategies also part of PIA? Guys, yes or no? Okay, so basically how it works in a PIA is see the PIA uh, as a document can definitely be used for mitigations because in the PIA document itself, you will have mentioned what are the risks you found out in that process. Now let's take example of HR process. Now when we look at HR process, the HR process will have talent acquisition, will have employee engagement, will have here and there stuff and stuff. Right? We document all of them. We review all of them. We found out risks. Right? What was the goal of the PIA? To find out privacy risk. Now when we find out, found out privacy risk, we put them in our risk and control matrix. When we put the risk in our risk and control matrix, we also add a risk rating and we also add the mitigation plan. Right, that mitigation plan will serve as a risk mitigation strategy for that process. Interestingly, PIA, ROPA, and DFD are owned by the process owners. Right, the HR head has to own this document, not the DPO. The DPO is there to review, to tell what has to be done, has to approve this is right. Right, so globally, this is the process that it works. Right. Okay. So if you're starting a privacy program in your company, you need to start with privacy champions. Right, that is where you start spread knowledge, spread awareness, and be good at it. So, okay, what are the steps to conduct a PIA? Describe, figure out where is your data, what data is in the process, think about the scope of the work that you're going to do, think about purpose of data processing. Why are you processing the data? Think about context of data subjects, think of documents for proper consultations, what are the specific compliances, identify. This is a good slide, guys. You will get all these slides. Just after this session, right? It will come in your chat. Just download them. These are good slides for your thought process to enable you to make sure that you tomorrow when you do a PI, you can use these things, right? Just for identification. So you will have risk mitigation strategies, your approval sign-offs, right? That is how it works. Think about data. Think about purpose of processing. Think about why we are processing. Think about whether this processing is right. Think about risk mitigation strategies. Think about approvals and sign-offs, right? You will think about all of these things. And our PIA will be complete. Okay, quick question. Do you think a PIA might also help in terms of reducing operational costs? Well, I think privacy is always a cost to the company, but who knows, right? No. <laughs> what do you think, guys? PIA reduces costs or increases costs? Okay, who's winning? I think yes is winning. Okay. Okay, yes. Okay, wow. I love privacy professionals. Okay, guys, come on. Right? It just quickly in long term, yes. So, guys, I'll, I'll, I'll also trick answer this question to you. What is happening is the laws are coming, right? And if it's not directly coming, it's indirectly coming to your industry, right? If you look at national data governance policy, Right, or if you look at our uh, health policy, well, there is a new health policy that we have. These are all policies for the industries, right? And specifically, all the industry leaders will need to follow these policies, right? We cannot run away from them. And even if you don't follow these policies, if you do business in Europe, because India is an export market, right? Or in Saudi, or in Middle East, or in US, they all have privacy laws. So you cannot sell your product if you don't do things like PIA or privacy programs, right? Because tomorrow they will ask you. Right. What is the evidence that once data will come to your environment, it will be safe. Right. You cannot tell them today in this in this environment of the world, you can't tell them, hey, we have antivirus. Right. Everybody has antivirus. Everybody has anti malware. What is your process? How does your process work? Where does the data go? We, we who all will have access to data. What is the purpose of processing? Was the contract signed? Are you ISO 77701 compliant? Do you have software privacy? Right. Do you have any of those is your product certified what do you have 
right? What is eligible for your work? We have to think about all of these things today compared to yesterday. So what are the benefits? So yeah, so in the long term, it reduces cost. For the short term, it may look like, hey, I have to do a PI, so I have to spend some money. But in the long term, that is the only way to go. For Because tomorrow, if you build a product and there are issues in the product, right? And with the amount of attrition that is happening in the industry, the later you go back to fix the product, the more money you have to spend to fix your products. The later you implement a thing like secure development lifecycle, SDLC documents, privacy development documents, the later you do it, the more money you spend, right? The more time it will take to implement as a culture. So what are the benefits of doing a PIA? It reduces privacy risks. It streamlines data protection, increases awareness of privacy, ensures compliance, not just to GDPR, to UAE law, Saudi law, Singapore law, Thailand law, you name a country, they have a law and obviously upcoming Indian law. Data protection by design, it builds trust, gives transparency, reduces operation cost. So yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> but before we go off, we'll take a lot of questions that you have. Plus, this is just a teaser thing. This is not the session. This is just a teaser for our upcoming webinar. Uh, so if you have anything you want to discuss in the company, you want to get a PIA done, you can fill the form. So Varsha, what about the link for the PIA webinar? Yeah, so there's this boot camp that you can see, right? We already have more than five registrations. I think two, three registrations or more we can take, right? I think more five max. So just see if you want it, you know, it's fine, right? Uh, so Apurva Joshi has asked, better to spend, okay, yeah. See, reputational damage, if you look at a report from IBM of database report, reputational damage stays for three years. The cost is not just of the breach. The cost is the customers that you lose. And don't think about customers too far. Think about yourself. Tomorrow, if a breach happens, does it affect you? See, you may be using that app, but it has affected you. You remember that Domino's had a breach. That is the customer trust that people lose. It's not that you're not going to use Domino's today. But overall, share value of the company or the trust that customer has decreases. And once the stain is there, it's there. Once it's there, it's there. It's in the mind. People know it. Right? Everybody's thinking about it nowadays because data is important. Because people who can see data know what can happen with the data. And that scares them. So this is a boot camp. If you want to get into PIA, if you want to become an expert, just get into the boot camp. Right? We will do you know, a lot of PIAs in the boot camp. Get into, try to find out risks also, whatever we discussed. And yeah, we just trying to do that, guys. And that is all for the session. So how do you see Web3 growing into becoming privacy compliant? I don't see Web3 yet, Achala, right? I still want some more time to th think about Web3. I still have to look at www. Right? And it's already compliance is an issue here. I don't think vlogging or putting a YouTube video, uh, you know, it's kind of taking up. Privacy, obviously, it's to think from an angle of privacy issues. Personal photos, if a company is posting from their account, right, then you need a consent, right? Until unless you find some other legal, you can't write that. If, I don't know if you can write that in contract, can be contested, right, as a principle. So that can happen. But if somebody is making personal blogs, I know, I, I hope you're not asking about TikToks, right? I hope in your office people are not making TikToks, by the way. <laughs> we banned that app <laughs> but if they're making reels right so it's personal right it's, it's, it's that person trying to do that it's not organization's responsibility right yeah household exemption is there Achilles is here hi Achilles good to see you so guys the session is coming to an end you have the privacy boot camp if you want to come in you want to learn end to end that is the boot camp for you Right. And I will see you soon, right? In the boot camp, right? We will get in the boot camp, we'll get PIAs done, become an expert there. So that is all from our side, guys. And have a nice day, and I will see you soon.